How's it going everyone? It's all of you Mother SpongeBob Thousand and today we're going to focus on our next significant severe weather threat that's expected to bring large hail damaging winds and possibly tornadoes by next week for a lot of the Midwest and we'll also briefly discuss about the severe weather threat that's going on in the Southeast but before I begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin by taking a look at our next major severe weather threat that's expected to impact the Midwest so of course if we were to take a look at the radar right now we do have some severe weather going on in the Southeast and some of these supercell thunderstorms could bring significant um could bring damaging winds so make sure to watch out for that in the southeast for the duration of the night and this could extend to the outer banks of north carolina by tomorrow but taking a look at what's going to happen next week where we could have just enough instability in the atmosphere right around the midwest for a major severe weather to occur so if i were to continue move forward you see that this trough as this moves eastward brings a very strong northerly flow and as a result we do see a pretty big cool down throughout the eastern half of the united states so if you're not really into winter this might not be the best week for you guys because of course temperatures will drop down as a result of the, this strong northerly flow that's going on but more importantly it's going to sort of create an environment where we're going to see the jet stream dip just far south enough to where and a ridge that's going to bring just enough warm air and warm and very moist air into the midwest to the point where we're going to see the ingredients of a severe weather threat develop in the midwest where we're going to see enough in, where we're going to see enough warm air for a lot of convection to occur and uh and very buoyant air molecules to um be located right around the midwest for our next major severe weather threat to occur and if we were to continue move forward you see the slow pressure system continues to move eastward we still see that strong southerly flow that's bringing a lot of that warm gulf of mexico moisture further northward and we do see quite a bit of cold air on the northwestern side of the united states and we do see a lot of snow throughout the pacific northwest so especially in the higher elevations watch out for the possibility of snow but more importantly for the midwest you need a be aware of the possibility of a major severe weather next week because you see that we do see some thunder showers develop along this trough moving through but this next trough that's going to be right behind it should be the one to really trigger our next major severe weather where convective available potential energy levels will be very high and we're just going to see a lot of buoyancy with this air mass that's going to allow for a lot of lift just enough lift to, uh, to occur in the atmosphere for a highly unstable environment to allow for thunderstorms to develop that could bring damaging winds large hail and potentially tornadoes tornadoes with it as well so if we were to take a look at how the winds look like in the upper levels of the atmosphere associated with some of these thunderstorms developing along with this chop look at how the wind direction changes quickly with height where you see that um in the lower levels of the atmosphere we do see the winds primarily come from the northwest but it's a stark contrast i mean the northeast but it's a stark contrast when we go only several um several miles um into the atmosphere where we do see the wind direction change completely from an easterly direction to more a westerly direction and that sort of change happens in the very lower levels of the atmosphere too right around the right around that area of the atmosphere where the millibar pressure is hovering around 800 millibars so it isn't that much high it isn't so high in the atmosphere and that could allow for a conducive environment for tornadoes to develop so it's definitely something to be aware of of course we're still around five days out a lot could change between now and five days we need to see how significant this jet stream dip will be associated with this chop because that will be huge in determining how much lift there will be in the atmosphere and how much convective available potential energy there will be for a conducive environment to occur for, for severe weather in the midwest so we're going to need to pay close attention to that 
Um, we're going to pay very close attention to how the jet stream positions itself over the next several days because that will be huge in determining the amount of unstable air and the uh, magnitude of severe weather you experience in the Midwest. So it's best to just stay tuned to updates over the next week. And even if we were to move a little bit beyond the five day mark, we see another significant chop that's going to move just to the west. That's going to um, be just so west of this storm. And you see that this slow pressure system does drop down to quite a high millibar pressure we're seeing a reading of 979 from the gfs model at least a forecast that this slow pressure system will drop down to a pressure of 979 millibars which is quite potent for a low pressure system during the spring months in the united states where it, it should bring a lot of snow as well throughout the rocky mountain ranges so make sure to watch out for a potential another potential major snowstorm for you guys associated with a slow pressure system but again thanks to the amount of unstable air another severe weather is bound to happen taking a look at how the winds change in the between the lower levels and upper levels of the atmosphere it's not as stark but definitely there is a change with height and that could lead to a higher risk of a tornado threat associated with these thunderstorms. So still a lot of uncertainty. We're going to need to see how jet stream positions itself over the next several days to really determine the magnitude of this severe weather threat. But what I could say is that we're likely to see a severe weather threat um, throughout the Midwest as early as maybe Monday or Tuesday. So it's certainly something to be aware of. And this could maybe even extend further northward into the great lakes region as well so it's some, certainly something to keep in mind taking a look at the convective global potential energy levels to really show you guys the um the magnitude of or the possibility that there's going to be a severe weather if we were to move on to right around 108 hour mark you see that while there isn't necessarily a ton of convective global potential energy convective global potential energy levels um, at this magnitude is enough to induce a uh, conducive environment for severe weather. So you don't necessarily need um, CAPE levels equivalent to 2,000 joules per kilogram or above. You could certainly experience a severe weather with CAPE levels um, with Cape levels like this right around Texas and Oklahoma. So make sure to be aware of that. And even and going into a little further with this next trough, the convective vote potential energy levels become very concerning because we do see readings well over 3,000, which is significant. That's just a lot of lift in the atmosphere, and that's just a lot of buoyancy with the air mass that would allow for an extremely significant um, severe weather to occur. And I'd say a severe weather is likely, it really all depends on the magnitude and how widespread that area of unstable air will be because that will determine the amount of severe weather. But what I could assure is that a severe weather is likely by next week for a lot of the Midwest. So make sure to pay close attention to that. I'd say anywhere between maybe Ohio and as far west as Colorado, you need to pay very close attention to your next severe weather that's expected to happen next week. So make sure to be aware of that. Now, I'm um, taking a look at um, the current radar to see um, how or at least what the storm prediction center forecasts when it comes to severe weather so day four you see that there's no real severe weather forecasting but it changes day six and seven where now the storm prediction center is forecasting that there is a chance of severe weather right around oklahoma and arkansas and i do expect this area to expand because the gfs model has been pointing towards a larger area of severe weather and a large area of instability i think the reason more re the reason why it isn't as large as what the computer models are forecasting is because there's still a little bit of uncertainty when we're, we go beyond the six day mark but i but most likely we will see this area of severe weather expand and affect a larger area of the united states and of course the chance of severe weather will likely increase as 
we get more confidence that there is going to be a major severe weather so make sure to be aware of that throughout the midwest now taking a look at the current radar you see that there's is there are a couple of severe thunderstorms going on right around south carolina georgia and we do see supercell thunderstorms developing just to the west of atlanta as we do see a little squall line developing so this should approach the atlanta area i'd say within the next hour so if we were to continue to move forward it's right around 8 30 this should arrive near the atlanta area i'd say around two hours from now so make sure to watch out for that and of course you need to be aware of flash flooding in this area because you see this is a large area of not only severe weather but heavy rain extending from south carolina to georgia so if you're within this area be prepared for flash flooding uh, the possibility of flash flooding because it's certainly uh, um, it's certainly more likely with this with rainfall rates like this in those areas so um, so make sure to stay safe while driving in those areas now um, in terms of how long the severe weather should last I'd say this should and probably right around 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, in the overnight hours as of course the amount of as the air begins to stabilize as a result of a lack of of insulation from the sun so i do expect the severe weather to eventually wind down within the next four hours but four hours is still a long time and you guys will still experience severe weather within the next four hours so make sure to make make sure to be prepared for that and in terms of the area where i'm ex i would i am ex currently expecting the worst of severe weather keep in mind this is just my speculation this it, um, there's still a lot of uncertainty regarding a forecast that's beyond the five day mark but as of now I, i'd say the worst of the severe weather should maybe be in this area and then southward should get affected um i i'd say the moderate chance is actually further southward probably to the mexico border i apologize for not being more concise with this graphic i made right here i'd say the severe weather is more focused in further southward but in this whole area you should be prepared for a uh, severe weather outbreak next week but yeah guys i guess that's it for this video i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content uh, make sure to like if you like this video it helps with the algorithm i really appreciate if you guys um enjoy this video make sure to like it down below and i hope you all guys have a great day